All right, everyone, welcome once again to Meal Solutions Monday, where we are focusing on grilling for the month of June. Obviously, I'm inside here today because it's raining outside, but it just shows you how versatile the recipe is that we're going to be making today that you can do it inside or outside. So today we're going to be making a grilled steak with a corn and tomato salsa. I'm so excited about this recipe. When I picked it out um, a couple months ago, I was just like, I can't wait for summer and to do this. Um, so it's gonna be a good one. I already have over here my corn going. Um, I wanted to get that working up for you a little bit. What I did here with the corn was I brushed it all sides with some olive oil and I have it in my grill pan. It needs to cook for about six to eight minutes total, okay? So as we go along, I'm going to keep checking on that, keep rotating it um, and get that uh, up and running and cooking. So we have it for our salsa. My goal today really is to try to make this dish for you from start to finish so you can see all of the steps for the most part, okay? Exception with that being that we did need to marinate our steak beforehand. Um, so I had that going. I put it in my marinade this morning about eight o'clock. You want it to marinate for about four to six hours. So let me show you guys um, what all is in the marinade. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and bring up the recipe for you. Let me just check my grill. My grill pan is getting hot. Um, let me rotate them real quick. And then I will, like I said, pull up that recipe for you. Oh, we're starting to cook a little bit here. Okay, once again, if you missed me in the beginning, I said I brushed all sides of my corn with olive oil. And I have my pan on um, medium high to high heat right now and the corn needs to cook for about six to eight minutes. And I'm probably gonna go closer to that eight minute mark um, just because my grill pan here is a cast iron grill pan. So it just takes a little bit longer to heat up and get going, all right? But as I said, let me share my screen so you guys can see this recipe and check out what I did for the marinade. All right, hold on here. Okay, so right now you guys should see the screen of the recipe. This comes off of our savory site. So if you're not familiar with savory, it's our recipe resource for a lot of good and tasty recipes. Um, if we scroll down here, you'll see that the recipe today does get a guiding star. Um, so um, that means it's a better for you recipe. So really great option with that. And if we scroll down further, we're gonna talk about this marinade, okay? So step one is to do the marinade in a bowl. You can put it in a bowl. I just put these ingredients right into my bag. Okay, you can see here, whoops, my steak is marinating, okay? So in a bag, you put half a cup of lime juice along with four tablespoons of olive oil um, and then two tablespoons of, here we go, let's see if I can say it today, Worcestershire sauce and along with two teaspoons of garlic powder and about three fourths of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, sorry guys, I'm just... Turn in my corn here a little bit. Okay, so that's what's going into the marinade. And um, then we're gonna put our steak in there and cook that, like I said, for about six to eight, um, excuse me, not yet. We're not gonna cook it. We're gonna let it marinate for about, um, about that uh, four to six hours, okay? So let me stop sharing my screen. And I'm gonna share a different screen here while my corn is still cooking. I wanna talk about um, the actual steak to use on the grill. So the recipe calls that you can use a London broil, which is fine. Um, 
I did a little research about what are some good steaks to do on the grill. And I would love to hear from you guys and chat about what your favorite steak is to do on the grill. Um, but this is what I found. And so ribeye was at the top. And that is what I decided to use today was a ribeye. Um, reason being is because they say it packs two things. It packs that beefy flavor and it's still tender at the same time. Whereas your strip steaks are also another good option. I see in chat, some of you are saying ribeye. Good, I'm glad we're on the same page. Your strip steaks, like your New York strip or your candy sitters strip is going to really pack that BP flavor almost a little bit more than the ribeye. But downside to the strip steaks is they are slightly less tender. Um, I see everybody is on the ribeye train, so that's great. Um, next up, you can do tenderloin if you are really looking for that tender cut of meat because it is going to be more tender, but it's not going to be nearly as flavorful. Um, and then down below, you'll see the porterhouse and the T-bone. If you're not super familiar with those steaks, they kind of give you a cross section of both the ribeye and um, the tenderloin, but they're going to be extremely, I don't want to say extremely, but they're going to be pricier because okay? so they're going to be pricier cuts of steak. So if you're looking for something more reasonable, but still packs everything that we're looking for when it comes to grilling a steak, ribeye would be the way to go. And it sounds like all of you are already on that train, which is perfect. Okay. So going to stop sharing my screen now and let me also get rid of this spotlight here so we see my corn okay i think we're almost about done we're getting some nice charred kernels but i'd like to maybe cook it just another minute here yet now um let me ask you in chat who has cooked corn on the cob on the grill before actually in the husk. Is, is anybody a big fan of doing that? I would love to hear. Yes, okay. Um, so if you have none, never done it before, but are interested in doing that, there are, oh, I see some people said always. Um, so, I've never done it myself either, but I did some reading on it. And for those of you who have done it, you can correct me if I am wrong. But they say it's a little bit more prep, but worth the prep in the sense that if you are going to grill it with the husk on, they recommend pulling the husk back first and removing the silk because they say it makes it easier when it comes time to eat it. All right. Then you pull the husk back over it and soak it for about 20 minutes. We need to soak it because when it goes on the grill, you know, the corn husk is similar to like paper. So we don't want it to burn, right? So soak it for about 20 minutes and then you can put it on the grill, medium high heat, once again, for about 20 to 22 minutes. I see some of you say you're not a griller. You live in an apartment. Nothing wrong with that. Um, you remove the husk, the silk, prep it as you would boiling it. Okay. Yep. But then do you put the husk back on? All right. If you want to cook it in the husk, from what I have heard, it gives you that nice nutty flavor and it keeps it a little bit more moist. Okay. Then compared to what we're doing right now. So a little bit more prep but worth it from what I've read, okay? All right, guys, I think my corn is about done here. We got some nice marks on it. So I am going to pull this from the grill. Give me a second here, okay? And then we're going to put our steak on. All right, move that. 
Okay, guys, let me get my steak out here. I currently have it marinating in this bag. Let me pull that out. And I might have to do one at a time with how my grill pan is here. Let's see. Coming through. Okay. So we want, let me wash my hands, guys. Hold on. All right. So whatever steak you decide to do, I'm going to turn this down here a little bit. Whatever steak you decide to do, you want about a pound for this recipe. So for me, that was two of these steaks. Both of them are not going to fit on, um, on my grill pan here. But that's okay. We want to cook these for about four to six minutes on each side, depending on how well or not well done you like your steak. I personally am a uh, medium, medium to medium rare type gal when it comes to steak. I would love to hear in chat what you are. Um, but so I'm going to cook this for about four minutes on this side and then flip it. All right. So going to try to keep an eye on the time here at about 12, 18. I'll flip it around. So I see some mediums in chat there. While the steak is cooking. Okay, we're all on the medium train. Medium rare, perfect. Um, mooing. <laughs> Sometimes I'm okay with that too, okay? Um, let's work on our salsa in the meantime while our steak is cooking, okay? So we're going to start off with our tomatoes here. We're going to do a whole container of our cherry or grape tomatoes. And we're going to simply have them. Why? Oh, man, this is going to be a long process if my knife isn't going to cut these very well here for me today. Let's hope that that, oh, man, I need to sharpen my knives. Not good. Hold on, guys. Let me find a different knife. All right, this wouldn't be my knife of choice, but let me see if this definitely works a little bit better. Perfect. Okay, so I'm using a ser slightly serrated knife to cut our tomatoes however direction you want to do them i really wish um i would have gotten like the multi-colored little cherry tomatoes to add some more pop of color i think would be fun for this i don't know i wasn't thinking when i uh when i picked these up but either way it'll be fine the corn is going to add some nice brightness and we're going to add some greenery to this here in a moment. Okay, so I'm watching my time. I got about two more minutes. And um, we'll get all of these in there and then go on to the next. So looks like the consensus with the steak is a lot of medium. Growing up, I wasn't a big fan of steak because my mom and Graham always seem to cook it like super well done. And um, I just thought, oh, this is so tough. And then whenever I started like eating out on my own with friends and they would get steak and they got it medium and I tried it, I was like, holy moly, this is, this is good. Okay. All right. So almost got all of our tomatoes in here. Where are we on time? I'm gonna give this my steak one more minute before I flip it. Okay. Has anybody planted some cherry tomato plants? Um, I would love to know if you have. My daughter and I planted some and I think I'm gonna to have to replant them because I didn't get the best containers for them and I feel like they don't have enough room to reach so but we got both red oh black cherry nice we got red and yellow okay all right guys i'm gonna flip my steak here Let's see 
that a little. There we go. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, look at that. Nice. Okay. You have planted some and lots of others. Perfect. Okay. Going to turn this down just a tad. Another four minutes. We'll cook that and then we're going to let it rest. And then I'll put my other one on. But in the meantime, we have our um, dish of tomatoes here. And then I have already rinsed off three green onions. Going to just cut the very ends of these off. Now I'm going to switch knives here, I think. Okay. Yes. And we're going to add these to our salsa. So some pops of white, lighter green, darker green, going to be lovely. Where did you find those thick green onions? Well, where did you think I found them? I found them at Giant, of course. That is where they are from. Um, but they are pretty nice. Okay. Almost done. And, okay. Do -do. All right. Most green onions at my store are, oh, okay. All right. So looking for some, some thicker ones. I even got these through Giant Direct. So somebody did a great job picking them out for me, huh? Okay, two more minutes. We have in here the whole container of tomatoes. And then I just added the three green onions. Now the recipe calls for a half a cup of cilantro. What I'm gonna do, guys, I'm not gonna measure this, but I'm just gonna cut some off. Okay, I already rinsed this and dried it. And then we're just going to do a rough chop. I don't measure out herbs. You can if you want to. Totally up to you. I just do things until they look pretty when it comes to salsas in particular. Okay. Um, so now this recipe can be great for um, like what the, today's class is called Meal Solutions Mondays. This can be a great lunchtime meal, a great dinner for, you know, having friends over. Um, or this weekend coming up, we have Father's Day. It can be great for that too, okay? If we're looking to do something a little different. All right, perfect. We got that on there. I need to watch my steak. I have about one more minute. Let me move my cutting board here. Okay, now let's add a couple of more things to this. We're eventually gonna add our corn in here, but I'm still giving my corn a little bit of time to cool. Let me see what you guys said in, uh, in chat here. You buy onions, I buy my onions, then when I cut the tops off, I use them. I put the bottoms in water and they grow and continue to grow. Yes, I think that that's a great idea to kind of grow your own from what you've had. I think that's lovely. Okay. Let me get out. Let me get my other cutting board here to put my steak on because that is done. At least that one is. Okay, and we want to let this rest before we cut it so it retains all of its good juices. All right, so I'm going to just put that to the side here. And I have one more steak, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Just a moment. Okay. There we go. Let me rinse off my hands. Okay, guys. Yum, steak is right. Okay, I'm gonna turn this up just a tin I'm gonna keep an eye on my time. So in four minutes, I'm gonna flip that. But in the meantime, let's continue building our salsa here. 
Okay, so I have my container of tomatoes, my three green onions, my kind of half a cup of cilantro. And now to that, I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of lime juice. If you remember, there was lime juice in our marinade. Um, so this is just going to bring out that flavor a bit in the steak. Don't judge me. I know I am using a dry measuring cup right now rather than a liquid one, but we're not baking, guys. So it's going to be okay. All right. So a quarter of a cup of lime juice is going in. And then to that, I am going to add another, whoops, another liquid ingredient, which is two tablespoons of olive oil. My tablespoon is in the sink, so I'm just going to eyeball that, but two tablespoons if you want to measure it. Doo -doo -doo. That's good enough. Okay, and then also we want a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cumin. So get that on here. I can't find my quarter of a teaspoon, so I'm just going to do half of a half teaspoon. Lovely. Now it all of a sudden smells like tacos, right? Because cumin is a big ingredient in tacos. Now, you can see this is a little juicy, which is fine because we still have to add our corn, okay? So my steak, what did I say? I need to turn that at 27. So we're still good there. Let's talk about the corn, okay? Here's my corn. Now, we are going to cut this off the cob. So to do that, some of you may have seen me do this before, we're going to use a bunt pan. Totally, you could just put it on a cutting board and cut it that way. But this method is pretty great if you are cutting a lot of corn off the cob. Okay. So say you are making, you know, you just got a whole bunch of fresh corn that you've cooked it or not cooked, and you're making chicken corn soup. Look what I'm doing here, guys. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm putting that here. Okay, so it stands in there, or you could even do it this way so it really stands in there. Okay, and then when you cut down, I know my hand's in the way, it just goes right in there. So like I said, if you are cutting, if I could do this with my left hand, I would, so you guys wouldn't just see my hand. But you then are just, let me see if I can, there. Then you're just collecting all of those corn kernels rather than them going all over the place, right? And like I said, this is a great way to do it if you are making something like chicken corn soup and you're cutting just cob after cob of corn, okay? And it contains it. So it's not going all over the place. Okay. Has anybody done this? I was waiting for people in chat to be like, whoa! But apparently you guys already know about this cool method, which that's cool. Clever idea. Okay, thank you, thank you. It's not my idea. Like, I looked it up online a while ago. I've been doing this a while, though. So if you ever did any in-person classes with me, I've, I've been doing it for a bit. You use a bowl. Very good idea as well. Okay, I'm pulling a little bit of silk off here yet. Okay, so keep an eye on my steak. Oh, I got to flip it. Got to flip my steak. Hold on, guys. There we go. I didn't have that one on as high of heat, so we don't have those grill marks. So I'm going to turn it up a bit so I can get those marks on the other side. Okay. So we did three ears of corn. So I'm on my second one now, and it was not too hot. Okay, I let it cool for a little bit. Okay. And I know we are coming close up to 1230. So if you have to hop off, totally understand. Like I said, I wanted to try to do as much of this as I could for you guys. 
from start to finish, okay? There's that, one more to go. Put a wet paper towel on a rubber jar holder on the cabinet under the pan to stop wobbling and not cut your hand if it slips. That's also a very good idea, yes. I'm just wobbling because of uh, how I'm cutting. My actual dish isn't wobbling, but I do love the wet paper towel trick. All right, almost done. And then we're gonna toss this into our salsa and it's going to look lovely. Okay. I love corn on the cob season. And then sometimes if you really wanna get some extra sweetness, all right, you uh, rub your knife along like this and it pulls out that natural milkiness in the corn, just adds to the, the sweetness, all right? Okay. Let. So that's been on there for two minutes. I'll let that go yet. Let's add this to our salsa, okay? Beautiful. Looks delish. Okay. And we will give this a mix. Oh, this is looking so good. I love the colors of the tomato, the corn, the onion in there. I could just eat a bowl of this. So good. So good. Ta da! Okay. So, that steak needs to cook just for another minute yet. Let me see if we have some grill marks on this side. Kind of. Okay. But this one over here should be pretty well rested. It looks like it is. Okay. And. Okay, so all we need to do then is cut this up and then we will plate it together. All right, I'm trying to think of what knife I wanna to use to do this and what I'm gonna put it on. All right, hold on guys. I'm gonna take this steak off. Whoops, wrong way. Okay. Let me take this one off. Oh, it fell apart on me a little bit. Okay. We'll let that one rest. That's turned off. Let me cut this here. Okay. Cutting against green. Okay. And then we will, wait, oh, that was a little bit of a thin piece. Let me make it a little bigger here. This got a little bit more done than medium, I will say, guys. It was a pretty thin steak. I should have pulled it sooner but i think it's still going to be good i'm gonna cut that that out from the middle here in a moment let me pull that okay. i don't want those pieces okay cut this now give me a second here Got a mess going on. Yep, it does keep cooking while it rests for sure. 
Um, I see here. Uh, looks yummy. I can't eat corn. Could you use a cooked sweet potato? Yeah, sure. You could do a sweet potato in there. I think that would be fine. Would be lovely. Okay. Hold on here, guys. Okay, just try to make this pretty here. We will put our steak out like so. Get those grill marks. Okay, and then we're gonna take our pretty salsa. And just layer it on the top. How fun is that? And delicious. Ta da! All right, guys. So, a little over um, the half hour mark, but not by much. And we just made a really quick and easy meal. Very delicious. I think it's going to be anyway. I'm excited to uh to dig into it here um let me pull my stuff back up so yeah thank you guys for hanging out with me today while i did this i will definitely be sending up a follow-up later um with the recipe but um if you're just like oh i gotta make this right now it is on our website it is the grilled steak with corn and tomato salsa um, but yeah, thanks for being with me today. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, 